You know I love video analysis. I normally use tracker video analysis. Here is Vernier video analysis. Um, I'm going to work through a video analysis as a little tutorial because I'm not as familiar with this software as I should be. And the best way to do that is to make a video. And then if I need to look back at it, I can. So this was a, this is uh, given to me by Vernier. I just want to point out that they sent me a license for Vernier video analysis. So take that in mind, but it's still a tutorial, whether you're using it or not, it's a tutorial. So let's just get into it. Um, I'm going to first use my own video. Uh, I recorded this with my phone. I did edit the video down, so I'll only have a short clip. I, I tried it both ways. It works fine if you just pull the whole video in there too. But I'm going to go over here, choose file, uh, and it's on my desktop. It's on my computer. Choose file. It's this one right here. Okay, and so it loaded the video. Let's just play the video, and then we'll work through the different steps of how we can uh, analyze this video in Bernier video analysis. And then I'll talk about the difference between this and Tracker at the end, just in case you want to know. So all I did was just toss a ball. It's not a perfect video. It's good enough, though, for practice. Uh, I, I'm, I put my phone far enough away so that I wouldn't have to worry about too much perspective. I have a meter stick right here. Uh, this is the light switch to my office. This is my door. That's the bag I use when I have to walk to the radio station to do my radio show. Uh, there's an eraser. But other than that, we really want to look at that tennis ball that I throw. Okay, so let's just jump into it. If you need to, you can trim the video by dragging that. I, I already have it trimmed, so I don't need to do that. Uh, what I want to do is go to System, and in System, there's two things that you can do. One, to set the distance scale, and two, to set the location of the origin, which doesn't really matter, but we can do it anyway. So these two things, all I need to do is to drag this and put one end at one end of my meter stick, and another end at the, another, at the other end. Now, one of the things that I like to do is to like really get that exact and zoom in. And, and, I, and this may be a problem with me, okay? But if I zoom in like that, I don't know how to, I don't know how to move. I can't see the rest. I can't scroll around in the world. So, um, and, and it could see that. What's that? Do? No, that's just that. And that minus, no. Okay, well, I'm not sure. If someone knows how to do that, that's fine. Just comment down below. Uh, and then once I do that, it tells me, and I, I do like this. It says 357 pixels is one meter. And that actually is one meter, but you can put that at whatever you want. So that's kind of cool. Uh, now let's put the origin. Uh, let's go back to the initial. I'm going to zoom all the way out. There I am. Okay. Let's go back to the, uh, the initial. Let's put my origin right here. If you want, you can rotate that. I think this is probably vertical. Uh, let's just line, see right here. It's kind of lined up with the, with the board. Not completely. Let's just rotate that and assume that board's vertical. But we can tell once we get the data anyway. You can rotate this around uh, as you like, which is kind of cool. So you can move it and rotate it works really nice um, there's that okay so I have the distance I have the origin we can also set the frame rate and that's one of the things that you do have to do every once in a while I think it's over here if I click this yeah uh, advanced frames frames per second so the I recorded it as 30 frames per second if you have a, a slow motion video uh, I think this is the playback speed not the actual speed so you might need to change this um, but if you just plug in your normal video, it should work fine. Okay, so now we're ready. Let's go over here to, and I'm looking because it's, it's a little bit small. I wonder if I make this bigger. Yeah, maybe that's too big. Okay, now I want to mark the location of my uh, tennis ball in each frame. So I'm going to go to add, and then it's just ready to add, right? Now I do love the really big crosshair here, and I'm going to just center this on my um, my, my thing. Now there is an auto tracker. I'm going to try out the auto tracker. Let's mark a couple points. Actually, let's just see if I do here track, start auto tracking. And then this, I can make it smaller or bigger. Let's make it about like that size. Let's just try it. I, I'm, I don't normally use auto tracker because I don't trust it, but let's just, let's just see if it gets it. 
Okay, it didn't get it. And I think because the background, it's not a very well-defined ball. Um, the background's not great. Let's, if I jump it up here and start auto-tracking, it might get it. I got one. Okay. Maybe I need to make my thing bigger. Again, I'm not great at auto-tracking, and I'm fine with that because, uh, you know, it's not terribly difficult to do this manually. So let's go back over to the beginning, and let's just manually uh, not do auto-tracking. So there's my first point and then I'm just going to skip ahead one frame and then it didn't mark that first one because it's already marked now you'll notice uh, I'll, I'll put it up here when I get close closer to the center object one okay let's delete that maybe if I delete that if I right click on this maybe this is good that we're doing this because we're learning new things um, add a point mass. Let's put a point mass there. Okay, edit. Frames, no. Um, trails, objects. Let's delete that object. Oh, you can't, I didn't even know you could do that. Okay, how do you delete the object? And someone's probably like a video analysis expert with the software, like, you just do this. Why won't he listen? Okay, maybe over here. Um, no. Data. It should be somewhere over here. I could reload it. I don't want to do that. Edit. Oh, there we go. See, I figured it out. Trash. No. Okay, so now we don't have any objects. Great. Go back over here. Object. Now I'm just going to manually track, click, click, click. Object one already has a point in that frame. Okay, so I think the auto tracker did it. So go back over here to edit, uh, click this, delete it. Did all these things have frames? Yeah, they're all right there. I got to delete them all. This is what we call making a mistake. I wonder if you can just delete all of the objects anyway. I'm going to start over. New experiment. Don't save. Okay. Choose file. See, this is why I don't like auto tracker. Ever. Just kidding. System scale is pretty easy. Set that right there. Set that right there. One, the origin, put that right there, that's fine. Oh, I did rotate that a little bit. Let's rotate that just a little tiny bit. And now let's go to object and we're gonna click. Now you'll see how simple this is. Click, click, click. Now you'll notice that there is some smearing of the tennis ball. So, you know, think of a video as a series of photos. And during that photo, uh, for each frame the object moves so while because it's moving you get uh you know just more than one space and so you just want to kind of like aim for the middle of that and that should work fine you can actually use the length of the object in the video frame to estimate the velocity but we can do that for another day uh so i'm just see how easy this is this is pretty easy and the graph is really nice too uh boom Boom. And you'll notice that as it's going back down and starts speeding up, you can see that it's, the image is starting to stretch out more. See? So I'm just going for the middle. The middle. The middle. The middle. Okay, so there we go. Now, I don't really need this video anymore, so I'm going to drag this over so I get a bigger uh, image right here. And I don't really need the data table, but if you want to copy and, and export the data table to something else, you can do that. Um, so here we have our velocity and our position, I mean our X and our Y position graphs. Let's just look at the X graph first. So I'm going to say uh, click this and turn off the Y. So there's my, I just have X now. And it, you'll see it's a little bent. And I'm not sure why. It could be because of the camera or it could be because of my axis scale. But I'm, I'm going to leave it the way it is. 
of course, what you want to do is say, what's the horizontal velocity? It's fairly straight. What's the horizontal velocity? Down here, I have a graph option. I click that, and then I click apply a curve fit, and I want a linear curve fit, and that's that, and then I can even move this. So this has a linear velocity, a horizontal velocity of 1.868 meters per second. Um, if you want, you can go to this, hide details. Uh, you can, there was a way right here. I can show the uncertainty of the parameters. This gives a plus or minus value. That's the way uh, Logger Pro does it. That's not the uncertainty in the velocity. That's the uncertainty in the fit. So, And then if you want to export this graph, you can. Um, but let's go over and look at our Y velocity, our Y position. So here's the Y position. And now I want to fit not a linear function. I want to fit a quadratic function. So I'm going to click Apply Curve Fit, Quadratic, uh, Apply. And then there's my acceleration is twice that value. You'll notice that um, it's off. It should be negative 4.9, but again, you know, it could be any number of reasons uh, why we don't get the exact same thing, and that's fine. It, it, this is pretty good for, for normal stuff. Now, you could also plot the velocity as a function of time. Uh, it has that over here. You'll notice I have velocity, so I turn off that one and turn on the y velocity. And then we get this. You see here, that's kind of weird. So I assume what this is doing, and this would be a fun little homework for you, you know, how is vernier video analysis taking the data and using that data to find the velocity graph uh you know is it using 2.3 points to find is it using the position before and after this point to find the velocity right there i don't really know but let's fit a graph i'm just going to fit a function to this part of the data not that part so i'm gonna oh let's see i thought you could highlight it let's just try highlighting yeah it does okay so highlight curve fit apply curve fit linear apply and then you see it did not fit those points down there so that's pretty good and it gives me a slope of negative 10.32 which is the same about for the acceleration as I got from the parabola so that's pretty cool okay what else can we do here let's just play around this is about app preferences section I don't know about that um, this is oh you can pick which I don't want the data table. There is a notes. So you can put notes there too. Okay. Uh, what else? It's a very simple interface. I like that. Now, they, they do have this vectors I haven't played with. Let's put a velocity vector. And let's use blue. And let's turn it on. Okay. Now, let's go back to the video and see if it's... Yeah, that's kind of cool. So, as I move through here... Oh, I do need to change that. So go back over here to vectors, scale them shorter. That's good. And then as I, this is actually pretty nice. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's simple to do. I like that. It's simple. I think tracker video analysis can do stuff like this, but I never use it. Um, let's do vectors. Let's change that to um, acceleration. Oh, and this is, let's change this frequency too. That looks better. There's the acceleration. Okay. I actually don't like that. Oh, that shows. So this is calculating the acceleration. Let me go back over to turn that down. Uh, the acceleration length right there um, this says that my acceleration is tilted so that's probably like the vertical axis or there could be air resistance there but I don't think the air resistance on a tennis ball is going to be enough to notice um, and then that's really tiny right there okay that's probably because that's the last point that's kind of cool I do like that um, objects let's just see what else we have here center mass i didn't do that i need to try that trails you can turn the trails on and off system uh we can change the polar coordinates that's kind of cool uh but not necessary let's just see what that looks like the y velocity r velocity okay cool 
And then finally, you can export your file. I can't remember where you do that. Let's see up here. Uh, save as or export. Let's do save as. I'm just going to save it as that in documents. And then I'm going to do export. And you can export just a graph as a picture. Uh, the video, that's just a picture. See, because it says save PNF P, or um, a PDF of the whole thing. That's kind of cool. That's good for lab reports. So I think this is nice. I've done video analysis with students in lab. And if it gets too tedious, it's too much tediousness for them. And this is definitely less tedious. So I do like that. Um, it's a it's a web app. I do like that. Tracker Video also has a web version. It Tracker Video is doesn't feel as polished, but it's definitely way more powerful. Tracker Video has uh, properties in there that allow you to adjust for uh, changing camera view, zooming and panning, and all that stuff. Uh, and this does not have that. There are ways you could make that work. Yes. Um, so, but from a student perspective, especially if they're using Logger Pro or graphical analysis, a lot of the, the formats the same here, so they may be already familiar with this. Uh, you could also use the pre-built videos if you don't want to use your own videos. I have not tried those yet. I always like to make my own videos because it's fun. It seems I did try uh, loading a video from my phone. So if you go to your phone and record the video, you can load it straight from your phone, and that worked pretty well too. And then you can save it and then re-upload the file on your computer and use it there. But there you go. That's your tutorial for Vernier video analysis. Um, hope you find that useful. And I'll talk to you later.